So on paper, these two CPUs look very, very similar. Four cores, eight threads, both on AMD's seven nanometer architecture, same memory cache, and boost clocks are around 300 megahertz apart. If you're an average consumer, you'll probably just choose the cheaper one and save a few bucks, but that would be a big mistake because under the covers, the core layout of these two CPUs is quite different. And in my testing, I've seen these lead to significantly different results. Even when clock speeds, voltage, power are equal between the R3 3100 and the R3 3300X, you could be looking at up to a 10% performance difference in production workloads and gaming, and also a difference in CPU thermals as well. Again, same clock speeds, same power output, but different performance and different thermals when it comes to these two quad-core CPUs of the same generation. In some games and workloads, you're not talking about a small difference either. So let's take a look at those differences and see what you need to know if you're interested in these two new Ryzen 3 CPUs. Now I'm not going to focus this video on comparing these new Ryzen 3 CPUs to Intel's 9th gen CPUs, although of course there will be some comparisons in the benchmarks to follow, you shouldn't be making a purchasing decision just yet until Intel's 10th gen CPUs are released. Those 10th gen i3s will be seriously competitive against these Ryzen 3 CPUs and most of you should wait to see what those have to offer. However, I will say that if you do have a Ryzen 3 1st gen or 2nd gen CPU on a B450 motherboard, can't be A320 or B350, then these new Ryzen 3 CPUs will be a very, very smart upgrade. For $100 to $120, it really is going to be a big performance bump from what you currently have. So the main difference between these two CPUs is not the fact that one is $20 cheaper than the other or one boosts 300 megahertz higher, it's that the internal core layout on the 3300X offers lower latency and better performance. In some cases, that performance bump is significant. The Ryzen 3100 has two core across two CCXs, a 2 plus 2 configuration, whereas the 3300X has a 4 plus 0 configuration, four cores packed into a single CCX. Again, even when clock speeds are equal, there's still a performance difference between the two and a thermal difference as well. But before we dive into that, let's take a look at how these two CPUs perform out of the box. So in a Blender render with no cooling limitations, we're using a 240mm AIO on an open test bench here. The 3300X will naturally pull a bit more voltage and power than the 3100 and boost around 300 megahertz higher as well. And it's not just a little bit more power, we're looking at around 20 watts more power draw. But when you run them on the Wraith Stealth cooler that comes stock with both processors, that's where things get really interesting. The 3300X runs significantly hotter than the 3100. Now, although this is partly due to the 10 watts of extra power draw, this is mostly due to the difference in the core layout between these two processors. Remember, the 3300X has a completely saturated quad core CC just like the Ryzen 3950X, and so power and heat density is a lot greater than the R3 3100. But that additional heat density may be worth it, because as we walk through these production workload benchmarks, we can see a significant difference between the R3 3100 and 3300X. Now, aside from these differences between the two that we're highlighting here, taking a big step back, these processors absolutely destroy 9th gen i3 and even the i5 when it comes to any multi-threaded world workloads. And whereas the first gen and second gen Ryzen 3 processors were kind of miserable when it came to any light production workloads, the 3100 and 3300X are very, very capable. Having said that, if you are after the most multi-threading performance that you can get per dollar, you might be better off with the previous gen 6 core Ryzen 5 2600 if you can find that for a good deal. But when it comes to gaming, we see even more of a performance difference between the 3100 and 3300X, especially in those CPU intensive titles. In some cases, you'd think that these two CPUs are from two completely different generations, whereas the R3 3100 typically performs around the R5 2600 in gaming, 
the 3300X is consistently around the 3600 thanks to its lower latency and faster single threaded performance. This is completely out of the box stock performance though and the common understanding which is usually right is that you can just take the R3 3100, overclock it up to 3300X speeds and get the same if not more performance. But unfortunately that is not the case. With both the R3 3100 and 3300X clocked to 4.4 gigahertz, the 3300X is still 2% faster in Cinebench, 8% faster in our Lightroom export, and 8% faster in V-Ray. But there are even larger differences when it comes to gaming. It's pretty clear at this point which Ryzen 3 processor is the better choice, and also that overclocking won't save the R3 3100. In Rainbow Six Siege, for example, there's still an 8% difference between them when they're at the same speeds, and that performance difference seems to be fairly consistent, or I would say even minimum compared to what you can expect in other titles. It's it's not a clear win for the 3300X though because as we looked at before, packing all four cores into a single node means that you're getting a greater heat and power density compared to the R3 3100. This means that if you are interested in overclocking the 3300X, you won't be able to do that with the stock Wraith Stealth Cooler, but you can on the R3 3100. However, ultimately the 3300X is the better choice over the 3100 just in terms of raw performance and I would recommend just running at stock alongside a fast memory kit, but if you are interested in overclocking, you can do that with an aftermarket cooler down the road. The 3300X is a really solid upgrade over something like an R3 1200 or 2200G. There, it's a very smart $120 upgrade that'll see a massive performance boost for your system, both for production workloads and gaming. However, if you do not have a current B450 system with the first gen or second gen Ryzen CPU and you're looking to upgrade to one of these new Ryzen 3 CPUs, I would highly recommend just waiting until the 10th gen i3 CPUs are released. That way, if you're looking to build a fresh budget system from the ground up, you've got a clear view of what both sides have to offer instead of just jumping the gun now and perhaps maybe even regretting it because those quad core eight threaded Intel CPUs are going to be quite good when it comes to gaming. I think that's what most people are expecting. Otherwise, if you are interested in either the 3100 or 3300X, I will leave them linked down below in the description. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.